Good evening, Magic fans. This video is titled, How Do You Sort Your Sign Card Collection? And I got this idea from a Command Zone video I watched yesterday about how to sort collections. Uh, and they had four or five different staff discuss how they sorted their collections. Um, the filming of this video today, it's October 24th. So it is the eight year anniversary of this GP, this was Eternal Weekend um, 2014, which was held in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Um, the VIP package came with um, Christopher Rush playmat. I think that's the City Hall possibly in Philadelphia. I'm not a, a history expert, but I think that's the old City Hall. Um, then I had Chris, sign this playmat, of course, while he was at the event. And uh, a few days ago, too, Wizards announced that uh, Eternal Weekend is returning for 2022. So a couple days ago, they said that the Le Legacy and Vintage um, tournaments are coming back. They're hosting um, a weekend, and it'll be in December. And I'm not sure if I can go yet or not, but it'd be nice to see how many artists are available to go and sign. I know Dan Frazier is at least gonna be there. His agent, Mark Aranowitz, posted a post that uh, they're gonna try to organize their accommodations on short notice. Uh, there will be a Legacy Championship North America, a Vintage Championship North America, and the dates are December 8th through the 11th for anyone that wants to check it out, I think on their website, it's hosted by Card Titan. They will post some information and um, add the artists as they're available to go to the event. I'm thinking back to the last time that I was at the Eternal Weekend uh, and how, you know, I haven't looked at some of my cards from the pre pandemic in a while and thought this might be a nice video and just to show people how I organize my collection uh, pre-signing and then after I get cards signed, what do I do? Uh, so if this is useful to you, let me know in the comments. I'll try to uh, explain this process to all the viewers. I know a lot of the artists have told me when I walked up to their booths, it was kind of the most organized card sorting method that they had ever seen. So, it, and it works if you wanna be efficient at the booths, at the GPs, at the events, you gotta be organized ahead of time, have a game plan, figure out which cards you need signed most, uh, most important to you, and then which artists are most popular, longest lines. Those kind of factors can help make your weekend a successful weekend. So what I have here is a long 800 card BCW box. It's an 800 count storage box. Uh, these are quite useful for holding a ton of cards. So like in my my collection, I just have all these cards sorted. But at some point I picked up these Planeswalker starter decks. Uh, they hold pre-made 40 card decks that had maybe one rare in them. Not too many other cards of value. So I would just take the decks out, keep the empty boxes to use as card holders, and put the artist's name on the side with a little label. So I would organize my cards by artist. I don't know, does anyone else do that? Am I like the only magic collector that just doesn't sort the cards by color, casting cost, or set? Uh, inside each of the boxes, they are sorted by age, like by date. So the, um, the first cards in each of these boxes are usually 93, 94, and then they kind of go up in age through the sets through the ages until you get to some sort of more modern cards um but most recently rob alexander did modern horizons 2 after tide bridge so if i were to go to a convention i would see who artists are signing and then i would grab this little box of cards and take it to the convention and then try to get the artist to sign the cards that I wanted. Um, typically they, they charge a couple bucks a card. 
So if you had 40 cards, that would be like $80 to get each of these little boxes signed. And that may not be cost prohibitive. So you kind of have to, when you get in line, you can pull your cards out and kind of think, okay, I've got 10 bucks to spend with this artist. Let me pick four or five cards that I really want to get signed and have them sign that while you're there and then move on to the next artist. So in this Dan Frazier box, we have some Apprentice Wizards, some Jester's Caps, some gold Border Jester's Caps. I'd probably like have him sign this in a gold pen. I'm a fan of having the signature match the card in some unique ways. And then I would do this for for each of the artists, I'd make a little box, and kind of save save the cards that I'd want to get signed at the next event. So Jeff Mangus, fantastic original alpha artist. He did Merfolk of the Pearl Trident, Grizzly Bears, Divine Offering here in Legends. One of my favorite cards, love getting that card signed and playing with it in decks and then I guess Merfolk again in other reprintings. So that's typically how I start by organizing the cards. I also have this uh, Mark Poole deck box, this older deck box from AEG that he did the art and then I had him sign that at a, an event once. And then inside that box I just keep, this probably holds 100, 150 cards. And so I have all my Mark Poole cards ready to go in a box like this. So if I were to go to an event and needed any of these cards signed, I would take them out for Mark and have him sign a whole stack of cards. And sort them, save them like that. We also have Douglas Schuler, Brian Snowdy, Mark Tidine, Richard Thomas. He's kind of incognito, but he does go to events and you can catch him Usually Gen Con, he's got another company that he promotes there, so you can catch some of these artists if you follow them, follow their web pages and things like that. So that's basically how I would organize my cards, alphabetically by artist. And then if I were to go to an event, um, I might take this entire box with me on the trip and then keep it at the hotel and find out who's signing like on Thursday at the event, and let's say like if Dan Frazier's signing, I'd take Dan Frazier out. Maybe Anson and Jeff are gonna be there. Um, who else might be there? Oh, Mark Poole's definitely gonna be somewhere, so we'll take we'll take Mark Poole with us. Um, and Mark Tedden, Mark Tedine. And then let's say maybe Brian Wackwitz. It's like, so these would be, the smaller box that I put in my bag and take it to the convention. And then I'd get these cards signed when I'm there by the artists and then do some sorting later. So after I'd get all the cards signed, maybe later at the hotel, I would sort them, put them in sleeves uh, and then take them home. And when I got home, I'd put them in, store them in another 800 count box like this. So this is where I would kind of sort out cards that I did get signed. Um, probably cards that are not super expensive. So these are anything that are like a couple bucks or under. And again, I would sort these alphabetically by artist last name. So Rob Alexander would be first. And any play sets of cards that I had Rob sign that are good cards or iconic cards, things that uh, he may have signed or drew the art that people would recognize. I would just kind of have those cards signed, save them in my collection. And you never know when somebody's looking for a particular card, if they need to find uh, a specific card signed by a specific artist, I can go through my box, pull out some cards signed by, let's say Liz Danforth, if somebody needs a play set of him to Turox, I'd have a couple play sets that I've collected over the years, ready to go. I could trade those. Um, she did Merchant Scroll, also a great card, and I usually keep their their business card in a little sleeve too as well, so I can remember their website, if they have a website, how to get a hold of them. Uh, we've got some Dan Frazier cards here. He alters a little bit on some cards, so you could get some like Jester's Caps with some sunglasses drawn on. 
Um, at one point, Mark from Mark's Comics and Collectibles would uh, would sign these little certificate of authenticities that you could put with some of your cards um, to prove that he was at the event and that you got those cards signed by the artist. He uh, he kind of uh, represents a few different artists. Uh, Douglas Schuler might be the other one. Donato is a very great artist. Uh, he was at IlluxCon back in 2016, so I have some of his cards. We also have Richard Kane Ferguson, did some iconic artwork. Um, he was also working with Mark. Then we have artists like April Lee. She did Lotus Petal. I have a couple different versions of her signature, her business card. She was at Gen Con a couple years. Um, we've got artists like Nicola Leonard, who I think changed her name from Beeson. Anson Maddox signs a lot, so I've got a lot of Anson Maddox signed cards. Animate Dead, Snow Covered Islands, um, Jeff Mangus. Did a, a punch of cards for Fallen Empires. After Antiquities, Alpha, Beta, a lot of cool cards. Ice Flow. Um, Keldorian Outpost is a one of my favorite arts that he did. I had him sign a bunch of those a long time ago. Um, he's got some business cards, also some certificates of authenticity that he was at with with Mark, um, Ken Mayer Jr. did a bunch of events. He did Mystic Remora, a lot of Arabian Nights cards. So I have some reprinted Urnum Dijins. He did Dark Ritual. He's got a business card. We also have um, Joel Mick is an original playtester. He worked on Arabian Nights, I believe. Came up with that concept for that set. Um, JLM Tome is... Joel's initials, JLM. Uh, so the JLM tome is named after him. Um, Jesper Mirfors, Therese Nielsen. She did some basic islands that look really cool, signed in blue. Uh, she did uh, Swords of Plowshares. And her card, she signs through the web. So if you go to her website, she has instructions on how you can get cards signed by Therese. Um, Margaret Oregon Keene does a lot of events. And then again, Mark Poole, he, he travels quite a bit. One of the busiest artists I've ever met, but he's a great signer. I like to catch up with him, give him a bunch of cards, tell some stories while he's signing all your cards. Um, I have some, some altered uh, counter spells that I made just kind of altered this image and glued it on to a revised card and he signed it or, and fourth edition card he signed those there's a crusade so yeah there's a bunch of cards just kind of all mixed in sorted by year that they were released and by set that is my sorting method basically for signed cards after they've been signed at a convention by the artists We've got Mike Rabe, who did a lot of cards in Ice Age, Alliances, Tempest. Uh, he did Wrath of God for Portal. He's a tough, tough artist to get signed. Does not travel and do events. Um, Doug Schuler, he did Prodigal Sorcerer, Sarah Angel, Volcanic Eruption. I always think a lot of these cards are useful and old school. They're nostalgic. It's good to just look at them. Uh, Brian Snowdy, some extra Brian Snowdy cards. Uh, this one is also signed by Nicola Leonard. I think she may have been the model for this card. So I think it's kind of nice that you get some artists and maybe the original model magic history involved in the cards as well. It's kind of cool. Um, Mark Tedden. I've got this. JM Day Tome, which is named after someone whose initials are JMD. Uh, it was Brian Weissman's favorite card at one point, so I had them both sign that copy. Have some 
gold border never neurals discs and some unglued chaos confetti cards which can be used as chaos orb proxies if you need to flip uh, like that instead of your chaos orb you can use the chaos confetti pretty cool um, what else we have that's marked uh, he I think he did this Juzam altar on someone's inner sleeve and I kept it with the collection so Nene Thomas um, does more fantasy art she travels to Gen Con and those kind of conventions you can catch her there I think she's also on Facebook so there are ways to get her um, there's a Hercules recall that someone else signed Richard Thomas like I said is very incognito did all the stuffy doll trip triptychs black vice the rack cursed rack um, and so his art's very rec iconic, recognizable. Did a couple of cards for Vampire, I think is the game, with a stuffy doll on it. I had a stack of those and had him sign it when he was signing magic cards. Onyx Path Publishing is his other business. And I think last but not least, we have like Drew Tucker with the T's. Did a lot of dark cards. Um, Drew Tucker, Pete Venters, did some Fallen Empires, and Pithing Needle was one of his other cards that was popular. So I had him sign some of those. Franz Vollwinkel did some Spell Bombs, and Brian Wackwitz, last but not least, W's. Uh, he did Force Spike in Legends. There's a foil version, <clears throat> DCI, and some other cards in alliances. So that's how I would sort all the signed cards after they've been signed at a convention by the artists. And I found it's really helpful just to be organized, have the cards kind of sorted by artist before I go and not spend time looking through boxes. Um, so yeah, these are all Mark Poole. This is probably 100 to 200 cards all signed by Mark Poole, but they're all just alphabetical by set and by year in this box if I need to trade any of these to people that are trying to make like signed decks with all the cards that are signed. You never know when you're gonna need some of these. And if you were one of the few people that had, ha happened to have the cards on you when you were getting cards signed by the artists, then you may be willing to share the cards with other collectors in the hobby. Um, but yeah, this is just kind of like a labor of love. I like meeting the artists, I like the cards, and then when I you know, can look back on it every once in a while, appreciate time spent traveling and connecting with friends in different cities. Um, the binder is my other method of story, storing sort, signed cards. Uh, Profolio makes a nice 160 page four pocket binder. These, um, I, they don't have any zippers or any padding to them or leather bound, but those Dex protection binders is what I use for like the signed Arabian Nights set. I have another one for uh, alpha decks and old school decks for more expensive cards, but for kind of just average signed cards that I want to display and kind of show my my player friends, I'll put them in like a portfolio four page binder. Um, so you can see, and these are all sorted by beta is the first set that I have kind of signed cards in here. Um, I have a black bias and some circle of protection reds. Uh, there's a story that goes behind this. Weissman signed Circle of Protection Red. Uh, I'll save that for another video. But these are all beta cards signed by the original artists that I've collected. Um, a little more special than the ones just in the box, so I kind of put these in sleeves. And then I have some unlimited cards that are... are what I prefer to play with for old school decks. So a lot of my old school decks are just these unlimited cards that I 
have collected or gotten signed over the years. Then it goes into antiquities. Um, those are some Hercules recalls signed by Nene Thomas. Um, there's some odd like miscut cards signed by the artist Mark Poole. Um, Tavis, who's a misprint collector. Joel Mick signed the original Jalem Tome. I have the Tron Lands signed by Anson. The Urza's Mines, Urza's Power Plant, Urza's Tower by Mark Poole. Um, some Legends cards. I have some Richard Kane Ferguson, Doug Schuler, Falling Stars. Then it goes into the Dark, Maze of Ith, Ice Age. I even have some iconic like Necropotence, Jester's Cap, and a poker card signed by Dan Frazier. Um, alliances. Um, Therese Nielsen has this really cool blue paint pens that sign, that look really nice with the blue border of the Alliance cards. So I had her sign a bunch of Force of Wills in blue, and I put them in the, like the Modern Master Force of Will sleeves. Um, she also did these beautiful gold bordered Force of Wills for me in gold to kind of match the gold border. So I have a set of those. And yeah, these are the cards I'd like to, you know, display take out a binder. I probably don't trade or sell any of these. Um, but I've also met a few of the um, original artists, obviously, Rabe did Tinker. And then John Finkel was famous for playing Tinker in his deck. So I have a few of these championship uh, cards from the World Championship decks. They have like a, a facsimile of the player's signature, but I ran into John Finkel at a magic tournament and had him sign a play set of these tinkers and he was really nice and you know like was happy to sign and meet fans. Uh, he also had a card made after him for winning a tournament so Shadow Mage Infiltrator I think is his card. That's sort of his image on the card of image of him on the card and I had him sign these as well when I met him. So this, this binder is kind of like artist signed cards, player signed cards, um, even you know Rudy and Ed me, Edwin the Magic Engineer signed a Chief Engineer card for me. So that's how I would store and display the, the nicer signed cards in the collection. Um, and that's pretty much it. So it, having a, an organized system like that has been most helpful over the years when I travel, like you want to be compact and have cards kind of ready to go and kind of have a, a, an idea of what you want to get signed, how much cash, what's your budget, you know, how many cards you think you can get signed in a couple days and then kind of plan ahead and like, you know, shoot for the moon on Thursday, try to get enough stuff signed and then reevaluate on Friday and Saturday and see if you need to change strategies. If it's busier than you think it is, you could um, skip ahead and just kind of focus on your favorite artist or your favorite cards that you need to get signed. That would be my advice. Um, if you have any other ideas in the comments, let me know. Uh, if you have questions about where to get um, binders like this, they're pretty ubiquitous. You can get these at your local card shop um, pretty much anywhere. But I just like to you know, the BCW 800 count boxes are pretty uniform. You can store those. They don't take up too much space, but they keep everything nice and nice and organized between events. So that's my tip on how to organize my collection. I hope that's been useful to you. I thank you again for tuning in, watching, liking. Um, if you're going to go to Eternal Weekend in December, let us know as well, and maybe we'll meet each other in line getting some autographs at one of the artist booth um yeah i'll put this video up on thursday so have a great thursday and as always thanks for watching